How's it going, everybody? It's about 4 p.m. Well, it's about half four now. We just finished work a while back. It was meant to be rainy and windy today. It seems to be holding off. So I am in a bit of a rush to progress the build at our bedroom. We want to use this place as a bit of a storeroom. I know we got a few barns. They all seem to be full. We want to get this place covered and sealed so we can get the back of the house sealed and just make the final push for the kitchen. We've actually found and bought a cooker as on a special offer. We've nowhere to put it. We want to start getting a bit of living space. The weather's getting bad. The evenings are closing in. We bought a stove as well. We have to fit that. So we're having a big push just to get the two sides watertight. To that end, when Claire was chipping away at the chimney upstairs, I actually started out here with my father. He came over. I really should have recorded this, but there was so much planning that I just really focused on what we were doing. So the first thing was I built this little wall. This is our bathroom wall. That's our window. And it just comes back a little bit. It's a nice small little wall. Just before we move out here and start to put our curve on, which we hoped kind of matched the curve over here at the back stone wall. So once we that done, it was up to us then to take one of our really long rafters and see how it lines up here. We can see where the old roof, well not the old roof, the roof we put on last is pretty good at the back actually. And what we want to do is we want to line it up here. Um, in order to do that, this really has to be our starting point from the extension. So we want the flat roof to just be cutting approximately here where it's marked. This was a whole day just to do this small door and to do this part. It was actually quite difficult because before adding up the, the roof, we got one of these eight meter pieces of rafter and we just kind of positioned it in place. We put some supports just to hold it up. We could position it because our corrugation is 7.9 meters in length. So from the very beginning there, 7.9 takes us up here to maybe, I want to say about four or five inches back from the wall. Now we can lower it down to get it closer to the wall or we can push it up and the 7.9 is going to go up higher basically and be a little bit back from the wall. So we're very fixed on the point down here, but this side can be actually wherever we want. So there was a little bit of trial and error. We used the ladder as a bit of a winch and we settled on there as being the best location for our cladding. So we're doing large cladding on the outside. So finishing the roof there will give me enough to put the cladding on and have the fascia just over the top of it. So that kind of seemed okay. And then we came back to here and we realized if our roof is that high, this is a drawing, I think. If our roof is this high, which comes to here, and we have a four by two batten underneath, and then we have the rafters starting here. Well, that means that our rafters will finish there. And that was absolutely not going to work. I'll be banging my head. So this is the doorway, as you can see. I have a bit of space here, but if it was gonna be coming down there, it wouldn't work. And on the other side, actually, down here is where our shower would be. At this height, I'd be hitting my head. So hum and haw, took a lot of time, drew a lot of plans. Tried to figure out alternatives. We had this all planned, but <clears throat> what we decided to do was to reuse the, the old floor. because there was a decent concrete floor in this side rather than dig it out. That was the first thing which raised the level. The second thing we did was we found this source of insulation in Limerick and the insulation was about 175 mil. So almost double what we were going to use. And those two things, I suppose we didn't really think about the height, but then we faced the height issue. So I've been spending a bit of time thinking about it. The two things I've decided is firstly, this is so flat. I mean, I think it's so flat. I don't know, I think it's only about three degrees. You can see that it's almost flat. Very, very flat. It's only about three degrees to pitch maybe five degrees really. So what I've decided is I'm not gonna cut a bird's mouth. I'm just gonna sit it on top and I'm just gonna support it here and put some 
other supports down on the inside joists. So that's raised it up a few inches, but I still need the corrugation down. So I'm just gonna trim the end of this and sit the corrugation on top of it. So just at the beginning, it'll be, how do you explain? The corrugation is gonna come flat the whole way down. When it gets to here, it's just gonna drop down ever so slightly. So they both meet here. It's going to do that for probably two sheets of corrugation. And then we hit the curve. So that corrugation is going to come back up to join around here anyway. So I'm kind of happy with that solution. It's quite a long span. So what you can see here, and I might start a time lapse, is I've started to take out stone, which I'm going to place a, a load bearing kind of beam or something in here. Just to carry the rafters if this is about three and a half meters so it's close to the midpoint and that'll just give an extra little bit of support to these guys it'll also tie everything again into the wall um, make the whole thing more secure the top rafter will attach to the wall anchor it in at various points which will help support the roof but i'm hoping because there's a little bit of a bend i'm hoping that it'll also support the wall what you can see is there's a little bit of lime concrete on the outside not much now to be quite honest and i think at some point in the future myself and claire are going to expose this in our bedroom it may not be this year to be honest with you so the lime or the lime concrete whatever you call it is just thrown on top of the stones you can see it here once you get the stones off then we are just into clay so there is nothing holding these stones here, except clay. So this wall is about a meter thick. We have a rough kind of a finish here. We can see it as well. It's just clay, it's just clay. They'll have to be repointed. This is a lime crete or lime render really. Once I have this out, I'm going to fit joist. Hopefully I'll do that tonight and i am going to then frame on this side the support get a nice and square shim it if i have to and then i'm going to pack it with some more lime creed and hopefully it'll be pretty good so then once i was happy enough with a plan for this joist and the ceiling do we show this now claire went up and she cemented in just under the small little bit of rafter i made a mistake on the ridge at the very top i think i have spare fascia left so when i'm done everything i'll pop up there and fix that unfortunately we've had we wanted this window to be kept so we could keep it in our bedroom but because we've dropped this down a little bit we're gonna have to close off the top half the ceiling height will be here so that's a solid stone and that's a solid stone so i might see how i can Put something across the top there and we just keep a little bit for some reason this isn't a very old belt <laughs> that's still there but it's pretty cool you can see the thickness of the wall as well i wanted to explore this to see if there's any treasure but we won't be doing that today okay roof sorted that meant i could start here and get my level for the um for the wall this is a double top plate, so there's another six by two that's gonna go up there. So that's about 44 millimeters high. I'm gonna put that in tonight and just drop this down and secure it. So with that height in place, we came back in on the ground from the edge for the larch cladding that's gonna go straight down here. Um, we have a nice panoramic window, non-opening window that's gonna go in here. And it's a beautiful view of the old cottage, some trees to feel behind. So that's gonna look lovely once done. I took the wall all the way to the end here. We left the bottom off the window. The window's gonna come down to this height. So it's gonna be quite big, but we've left it off just so we can get things in and out. We framed up to the very end here and I've most of it going straight down. <coughs> Sorry, I had COVID last week, actually so did Claire, so. We didn't film an awful lot. Didn't do an awful lot. I have a really bad cough, I just can't shift. So if I'm coughing, apologies. Okay, here we have a really nice two meter patio door. So this will be our own little access to a tiny little 
garden here as i said in previous previous videos <clears throat> we kind of fell in love with these stones the fern the moss um and how the stone wall was just done in a little curve down here so from the get-go we wanted to have our own little kind of private garden here so we're happy with this and we're happy with the, a nice big window there our bed will be right behind it so we'll also be able to see this from the bed problem being now with us having to drop the roof level is it doesn't fit in here it kind of just fits in there it goes into the top wall plate a bit but down here it goes way above it so what i think i'm going to try doing is to frame all of it and then i'm going to take the double wall plate off and i am going to use the lintel or sorry i'm going to use the rafter that's going to be right overhead here as the lintel and i'm going to double it up or treble it up with another eight by two and i think that'll be great nice effect of that actually is the patio doors will be recessed into the ceiling so the, the frame will be hidden essentially so i think that could look quite cool finished off that last night each one of these has been cut by hand just to get the correct slope and angles i was about to start on this tonight but i think actually if i can get this chiseled out if i can get a beam in there i'm going to cut the same taper about three degrees here on top of the joist slotted in if i can mix up a little batch of lime render just to secure it in this pocket i think i'll do that and I might call that a, a, a day. Ironically enough, the, the rain has just started to come in now, so I don't know how long I'll get. I'm gonna try you on time-lapse anyway, we'll see where we go. Catch you later. You can see that the clay only really seems to be the first sort of foot going into it or 12 inches at the back there I don't know, can you see that I'll turn it back at the back here there is very little of anything the rubble stones just seem to be stacked this is typical of a these are called rubble filled walls where the course on the outside is um, stuck together with whatever you can find locally. In this case, I can see that's the clay with the kind of lime tree render on the outside. <clears throat> it's lasted hundreds of years, and then the inside was just filled in with um, ugly rocks, rubble, basically rocks that you couldn't use for the outside face. It's kind of a shame they covered it up. It would be a big job to take it apart take off this concrete and to repoint it we see we see how badly we want the stone in our bedroom but it's interesting anyway I'm happy enough that this is a nice solid base this rock right here there's also a nice rock back there and I also have a very nice slab there which I think it's too thick to reuse I've loads of other rocks here that Claire pulled out when she got at the sycamore tree. There's a few flat ones I might be able to use, but all in all that looks pretty good. I'll size up my hole now, this was way quicker than I thought. I'll size up my wood and then see what I can squeeze under and I might taper it down on the table saw. So let me take some measurements. the time lapse until it was almost too late I put a three degree I don't know if you can see it put a three degree 
angle on the table saw and I put the small little cut on the top of these two by sixes. Hopefully that'll give us the angle we want for the um, vertebeam for the rafters. It was a good test of this little parkside table saw. This cost 120 euros. I mean, no, sorry, 140 euros, I think. It just about did four inches. The blade at the top wasn't massive, but I think it did struggle to get through it. Cut two at the same time, so I'd say that's probably the limit of what I can do. I was gonna put a third two by six on. I'm glad I didn't now, because this would not have cut it. So let's get this up. See how she sits. It's Monday afternoon. You'll have seen that I was working on the fireplace in the upstairs bedroom, which wasn't a necessity, but just really bugged the shit out of me because we didn't need it. It was taking up space. We're not going to use the fireplace because we've taken the chimneys off. And so it just actually from day one, when we stepped foot in here, it was just such an ugly, piece of concrete so this you'll have seen me throwing it out a window that's the window that it was coming out of and this is the mountain it was our only opportunity really to do it because otherwise it would have been lugging it down the stairs in buckets or chucking it out the front window which we didn't really want to do and it made sense to throw it here because this is going to be the floor to our new kitchen and as you can see, the height is there of the wall plate um, where the wall come, where the last wall Rob put up is there. So we have plenty of space to fill. So it made complete sense to fill it up uh, or to knock it out, just throw it out the window. I was a bit annoyed at the end because I was trying to hold on to the flue, the ceramic flues, and I broke to the last two. I'll explain how I did that. Um, I'll take you inside and sh just show you what it looks like now without the horrible monstrosi monstrosity of a chimney stack. So we'll just go in the back here. This all obviously has to be leveled as well, eventually. Back door. <coughs> It's amazing actually just how, I don't know if you can see this now because it's so dark in here, the entire house is so dry now. It's great. Um, when we pulled up the floors in this sitting room, there was puddles of water under the lino. So it's great to see how dry it is now. And in fact, the whole house since we put the roof up is just so dry. Here's my um, flues. But anyway, before I show you that, this is the, yeah, this is the fireplace. 
I don't know. We'll have to obviously plaster this. This is the exterior wall and it's very thin compared to the downstairs. Obviously this was all add on, added on to the original cottage. But anyway, I'm not sure if this is as a result of the heat, um, but you can see the line of how the flue came down from the top all the way down. Not exactly straight, as a sort of a curve, windy curve. I was using for the most part um, a really handy little drill that I had of my dad's. Actually, Rob has just taken it now because we're going to try and order a new one. And for the most part, it was brilliant. But then that gave up yesterday. Also, you'll see in the time lapse, the very first day, my Rob's mum was here. And she was, as I was knocking down, she was chucking it out the window. So it was just great to have another person working on it. Yesterday, then I was on my own. And so it just takes a little bit slower, you know, because obviously you've got to clean up every now and again because there's only so much you can knock before you start falling over it. But we were using the big, I'll show it to you downstairs, I'll show it downstairs, the big Kangol, really heavy thing, which in my arms were just aching after it. But because of that, I couldn't be as delicate around these flues. I don't know why I want to keep them, but I just feel there's a little bit of history behind them. They're so irregular shaped. Again, I don't know if that's due to the heat or due to just the way they're made. You don't obviously buy those anymore. We now have metal flues or flexible flues. So that's actually what's going to come up here. It will be a flexible flue. You can see there's a lot of stuff after dropping down as well. But that will come out at the bottom when I take out the stove. Yeah, so that's that. Um, so yeah, because I, I didn't have the my little Bosch um, hammer drill died. I had to use the big thing and then it meant I just couldn't be careful enough when I was pulling out the flues. Anyway, I was like, why are you keeping the flues? Anyway, I don't know why, but I am. So that's the chimney story. Um, I'll show you the big um, STS drill that I was using to take them out. Um, I have to run now because I have to go and get my son from after school study, but it's here. So yeah, so this was the big thing we ended up having to use at the end. And it's so weak, like it says on it actually. 105. Oh, I don't know what weight it is. But anyway, whatever it is, it's bloody heavy. And But look, it did the job. And it got the last bit out. Probably a little bit faster than the other one. So that's where we are. And that's the story of the fireplace. This is the bottom end of the fireplace now. So you can see this is where I've got to. I've taken out the top. Here it's just one big wall. There's no a protrusion. So we're going to take out this. We have a new stove coming and we're going to set it back in. And as soon as I find the other flue, then we can really, we can just empty all the crap out of it. And who knows what we might find when we started doing a bit more digging here. There definitely was an open fireplace here. Doesn't seem to be any lintel, but yeah, so that's it. That's the fireplace. Hey folks, it's Wednesday afternoon. Finished work a few hours ago. Started doing a little bit and remembered I didn't have you guys with me. I actually forgot about the GoPro as well last night. Been a few days of easy work or easy work out here. I think the last thing you saw was me cutting out this um, this post which I attached here um, full height I was going to cut a little bit out of this kind of beam so that I could keep the continual wall plates or top plates here but I decided just to keep a hole just for the extra strength I don't think I need it but I'll be happier knowing it's there this isn't fully attached as I wanted the wall to dry and go hard a little bit but it's a pretty good fit and I think I showed you as well cutting this on the table saw it struggled but uh, did a pretty decent job happy enough with that I'm not sure I showed you this I think so but basically what we have here is just a very very thin uh, kind of a a lime creek render, very thin. 
and then behind it we just have clay so yeah this this whole place was built on clay so I took this out about 30 to 35 centimeters and it was very rigid inside there so I was happy enough just to put my um, beam on top of the rocks that were in there I wedged it up so it's perfect it's hanging a little bit above now that's just how I have it here so I can work it you can see at the top it's there's a little bit of friction there filled it with some more lime crete threw a few more stones in there happy enough with this now this is very well supported i was going to finish off with the roof here but i started to run out of two by sixes because i had no two by sixes so in the meantime i went down to help claire she started to demolish the wall at the very end the final bit of demo we have to do so she really struggled and um i don't know if she got it on the video but the Bosch SDS drill hammer that we were using, she kind of killed it doing the chimney. So I have got the big Kangol demolition hammer up there. It's quite heavy. If I can get it standing on top, I'll take you up in a minute, but there's two layers of concrete that I just have to get to and this Kangol does it really well. And then I think all the rest of the wall is the same old stuff. I'm gonna continue with this in a few minutes. I'll show you time lapse. In the meantime, I got another order of lumber. I was just running out of the two by sixes. I'm not sure why. And I wanted some two by eights for the big lintels that I'm putting in here. I got my fascia and soffit for the front up here. Stop the wind flowing through cause I also have a stove. I want to fit the stove. It's starting to get cold here now. This stove will be nice. It'll give us a warm space. We can come in and take a break out of the caravan. This is a Stanley Oshin. Uh, I had one of these. In fact, my parents bought me one as a present last year in our last house. And it was game changer. It was absolutely amazing little stove. First time in our life we've ever had a fire in our house. In our last house, we had just, just central heating, really, underfloor heating. It was very well made, we didn't need any more. And when we got this little stove, we were super happy. We had to keep the stove in the last house as part of the sale. So we were kind of determined to get a replica and to use it here. This is the old Stanley. This is a boiler, or a back boiler. We're, we don't want any wet heating, like we don't want water pumping around the house. We're not going to use this here. I may move it down to the party barn and use it to run some heating down there on an ad hoc basis or we might use it for a hot tub but in any case this stove is going to come out we're going to open this up just a little bit i think there used to be a wooden lintel here before apparently they all burnt in this region so we're probably going to replace that and we're going to put the little stanley just to kind of sit in the um in the fireplace and yeah so in order to do this job we want to get the back of the house all wrapped up with Tyvek, if not cladding. And we want to get the fish and soffits up there to stop any air coming through. Then we're going to have the windows, I think, in a few weeks. Looking like the likelihood of the projects we're doing. This Our neighbor's doing a bit of chainsawing, I think. A tree or two fell down in their land. We had a very bad storm last night. Our caravan was rocking you wouldn't think it to look at the weather now but i think it was up to 80 kilometer an hour gusts so it's given us a bit of an onus to make a move on and to get this final bit of demolition done this is where we thought the windows were going to be they're actually going to be about 40 centimeters taller than that so i think if we can take it down to maybe about that orange line there i must run a, a the laser line just to get the level with the back but I'm thinking we need to demolish all of this. Then that should be it for demolishing. That and the fireplace. Will I take you up or will I try on time lapse? Yeah, I'll take you up, why not? So the scaffolding is coming in fierce handy. I should have shown you this before, but what we basically have is the old roof, which is green tin. And that was concreted in with a kind of uh, concave piece of concrete on the top it served as a cap to keep all the water out so that was a very good job but that was just poured directly onto a previous flat concrete slab 
which was about two to three inches deep and that was just poured directly on top of a mix of stones and this was leveled off with a third piece of concrete so what I'm basically doing is knocking off the pier cap with the metal then hammering through the next the next I suppose layer of concrete finally getting through the third layer of concrete and trying to knock out these stones I'm trying to do it sequentially this is what I figured from last night you can see actually it's rained a lot last night you can see it's very sandy so there is a little bit of concrete in between or a little bit of cement in between these stones but it's mostly sand so it's quite easy to take out that's about it i might put a ye on time lapse <laughs> I showed you yesterday or at the weekend but I'm securing the joists to the walls and obviously when the stones are held with clay there's nothing really to secure it to so I tried to find some sand sandstone which a lot of this area is sandstone and it fit, makes a perfect hole and it's really easy to drill through and as long as you don't over torque the kind of concrete screw that I have, the anchor bolt, it'll just attach perfectly to the sandstone. So here's an example. I drove through this sandstone piece. And look at that. It just sliced the whole thing into lots of little slates, little flat pieces. So we see a lot of this kind of sandstone here. This is, this is another one I just went through. This one just went in half. Can I get this up? Can I get this up? Come on. There you go. That was the actual stone. You can kind of see all the lines that are on it. I suppose stress points and lovely kind of lovely kind of smooth cut so what this tells you is whilst you can shear it that way when you drill straight through them all it kind of tightens up well so handy to know your stones hey eh? there's another one it's a nice one stone there now you can see there's kind of three shear points along it I'm very tempted to keep well we started to make files to keep these stones but there's just so many of them and uh, let's just spend money if we had to buy infill because there's a lot of space we want to fill in our kitchen. We're actually raising the level quite a lot here. So, yeah. Makes sense to keep it.
hello uh, we're getting into the time of year where we have these torrential showers we just blasted one there place is soaked hey 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 haven't found any treasures in the stone wall but I'm about halfway through it now and I've just taken out the window and we can see at the front there's two nice little I-beams I don't know how long they've been there for concrete poured in the middle and at the back we look like what's a cast iron bed frame at least I think it's a bed frame you use what you must it's a chilly chilly autumn evening but it's good to work up a sweat ain't it Claire what are you doing I'm getting rid of my chimney I came out the window very handy window every really Irish handy. farmhouse restoration needs one an escape route we didn't think about what we were going to do with it when it came out of the window but Rooney and me we got it under control and we Rooney to show you we found this massive stone had no idea what it was for did we Claire no no idea <laughs> it took ages what not big enough to put my stove on though I need a bigger one no it's not so we got a smell of mushroom or damp out of it and while well, it's all the wall is this kind of clay and sandy lime right here it stinks it's like there's loads of wood in there somehow and there was a void there was loads of wood here as well you can see they poured the plaster right up against the wood so the wood was facing inside of the building and then this was over the top kind of wonder was it an original window or an original um door the level here if you can see it's just that shoulder height maybe chin height maybe nose height and uh we can see that there's a lot of concrete that's been put here so i'd say the floor level is raised by a foot or two so i guess they poured lots of concrete for outside the house to make a pathway and also to level off the yard perhaps the level came up too high and rather than start from scratch I'd say maybe they just made a big hole here and moved the window I have no idea but there was loads of little bits of wood and loads of little bit of hinge was in here I don't know why they would have had a hinge loads of weird bits of wood weird I don't know is that a nail or something strange things all rotten no treasure yet we'll keep looking
probably can't see me but just finished up on the wall um it's another lovely evening but it's about happy friday everybody from uh lovely interchangeable september end of september sort of day loads of sunshine showers every other hour we're coming to the end hopefully of our wall i just want to finish this very last piece hopefully this evening then i am going to get the laser level out don't know if you recorded that but you want to say hi yeah it's okay don't know if we recorded this last night but claire had the laser level out she drew a string line started to level there i want to take this wall down to about here today and once i'm down at that level i need to figure out where the window is going to go so i have to coordinate the back of the extensions with the back of the bedroom up there and the window height i kind of know where the window is going to finish here and tally that line down here now it's going to be a lot taller because the house is on a slope but i think it's going to be close to where i'm stopping the demolition maybe about three or four inches underneath that roughly what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep the wall stone wall there and from the inside the stones will be visible it'll be nice and deep and maybe do a window seat on our two big windows there i'm going to take it all down to the height of the window and i'll keep the whole height going the full way across and gonna put a little ring beam on there just to snug everything up the ring beam is going to be a few inches above the height of the stone and i'm going to backfill on both sides i think with the stone so we'll have stone front and back i think i think that's where i'm going with it anyway for today we've demolition tomorrow we'll get the levels and maybe start on that ring beam so I'm not sure what Claire's going to do, she might talk to you later, but for the time being, I'm going to set up and put you on time lapse. <laughs> 